I've always had a fascination and love for freshwater pearls and pearls in general. These are a strand of my own ones that I've knotted in between and a lot of people say why take the time and trouble to knot your pearls? Well it's simple really. They're a natural gemstone from the sea and although durable and can last many many generations they are quite fragile. They can easily be you know scratched um, or harmed and by knotting between them they don't touch each other when you're wearing them. Also if your string ever breaks you're only ever going to lose one of your precious pearls. In fact I've got a strand here that a pretty much one that I made quite some time ago and it's with a single this one was made with a single strand method that um, is very popular. My, my method is a double strand method which I think is a lot more durable and stronger but you can see that the this thread has stretched somewhat and you know the, the knots are becoming a little bit frayed and it's really time to restring this and I'm sure you've all got some pearls at home that might have belonged to mum or grandma that you know could do with a good restringing. But you don't have to just string or not pearls because they drape so beautifully when you do. It's nice to separate your gemstones in the same way and you can incorporate different beads and different looks to make beautiful bespoke jewellery that will be timeless. Firstly and most importantly some lovely pearls, some thread this is silk thread, but you can also use a polyester or a nylon. This one has a needle attached to it. You'll need a clasp, a clasp of your choice. You just need to make sure that the hole here at the end of the clasp is large enough for this, our next product, which is called French wire or GIMP to pass through. And I'll explain all about this to you later if you don't know what that is. And lastly, you need some glue. I just use a, a drop of super glue. You could use clear nail polish and of course some nice sharp scissors. Now what the French wire actually is, is a little hollow coil. Do you remember when we were kids we had those slinkies that used to, you used to run down the steps and they, you know, the, the wire would go down the stairs. Well pretty much that's what this is. And you have to treat it very, very carefully though because it won't go back into shape. And I'll just show you what happens if I pull it apart. You see, there's my little coils and that's never going back into shape. So unlike our slinkies of when we were kids, look, that's it, dead. So you have to treat it very carefully. Now I'm going to make a bracelet today just so that I can show you the whole process from start to finish and, uh, and, there's, and plus because I'm doing it in black I want to take it off later anyway. So I'll just run off probably for a bracelet about the half a strand. Now don't worry about measuring at this time. I mean you can measure out enough beads approximately for the length of bracelet that you like, but we will measure later on. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the French wire, or it's also known as GIMP. I've got my sharp manicure scissors. They're the best ones to use because they're fine. And I'm going to measure out, it only has to be approximate, about uh, a centimeter or a half an inch. And then I'll line that up and then I'll prepare another one exactly the same size. There we go. So now I've got one for each end of my clasp and that's all we need to do. Now I'm ready to begin. I'm using my Baroque pearls. I like these because they're sort of sort of odd little shapes and they've got all the natural little dings and nicks in them and they're, they're quite organic and I rather like these but they still have very nice luster to them, they're a nice pearl. 
I'm using half of the strand because I'm just going to make a bracelet in this demonstration so you can see the whole things, you know, the beginning, the middle and the end all in one go. I've taken my thread off of the card, here's the needle and here's the end of the thread and I'm going to measure the end of the thread and uh, about 12 inches or so from the end and I just use my bead mat as a guide really, it's, it doesn't have to be exact. This is my insurance in case I run out of thread at the end. So I'm going, some people not, you know, from the left and from the right, and sometimes you take from this end and some from that. So it's good to have this little bit left over. I'm then going to wind it back on to my card and keep it in place. And this will actually act like a stopper bead for me. So my thread's there in place and I'm going to then thread my beads using the needle and on, onto the thread. Now the needle, just handle it reverently and just gently place it onto the bead and just take your time with it and you'll find that your bit your needle will last you a lot longer if you just I'm just holding it ever so gently and threading the beads. It's a nice fine needle and it's attached to the thread. And of course I've got two meters of thread here. The card comes with two meters of thread on it, which is more than enough for my bracelet. In fact it's it's the right amount for a necklace. So I'm going to have lots of thread left over so I'm, I don't have to worry too much about the thread. So I'll just get these on and then I'm going to bring them right down to the end of the card which as I said acts as my stopper bead. So I'll just pop these on quickly. The thread that we're using here is a size 2. The method that I use needs no tools whatsoever and you always get a very good result. But the key is that your thread goes through the pearl twice. So you need to have thread fine enough to do that. You still want the hole to be filled with thread I like my method because I feel, unlike all the other methods where they just use one thread um, through the bead, having two, I just feel that little bit more secure. So therefore I'm using a slightly finer thread than the normal traditional methods that uses, you know, tools or where you use a pin. This method we use two, two threads through. Okay, so now I'm all threaded up and I'm just going to run the beads down to the end of the thread. Now you'll see I'm just taking it very carefully and I'm not allowing my threads to touch because the silk can ravel easily. Silk is, oops, silk is tightly wound and so it's, it's always... Um, has a life of its own. So now I've got it down here to the end and then I'm going to put my card on the left hand side. Now I'm right handed and so I put the card on the left and this is my working space. If you're left handed put it on the other side. If you're very comfortable using thread it doesn't matter which you can do either or but that's how I do it. So I've got my card here acting as my stopper, my beads. Here is my working space and I'm working flat on the mat. I bring my first bead up and this is my working space. So I will always keep this amount of working space. Now I'm going to show you how to lay out the thread so you have a happy result. So I'll just do that now. I'm just going to take the end of the needle and I'm going to bring my thread and whenever I lay it down 
I'm going to snake it like that. So see, I've got this big snake of thread and you can see it's quite kinky thread and it can very easily ravel and you really can get yourself in knots. So if you remember to take your time and to lay out your thread in this manner as you're working, then you, you won't have a problem and you'll have a much happier, easier result. Now, I've got my working space here and my thread is snaked around and here's my needle. I've got my French wire and my clasp ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to handle the French wire. You need to be very, very gentle with it. So I'm just gently placing it between my fingers. I pick up the needle and again, hold the needle towards the end so that it's easy to thread and then just pop the French wire on. Now once you get it on, you have to be very careful with it. You can't just pull it, you have to ease it along. And see I'm supporting it between my fingers as I pull the thread through. And again, I'm snaking up the top now so the thread doesn't st get stuck. And I'm just very carefully bringing it all the way down to the bead. See, I'm just supporting it. I'll let it sit here. Now see, I've snaked out. Now I've got to thread on my clasp. So now I can bring my bead in, pop that through. And again, I'm just going to very carefully bring it through. And as I bring it through, See, I'm laying out the thread. It may seem a little tedious to you, but trying to unknot this thread is far more tedious. Okay, so now what we're going to do is get the needle and I'm going to go straight back through the purl. So what will happen is this bit of uh, wire will coil around, go around the thread and come up to the pearl. Now to hold the pearl and to make sure you get the thread through easily, I just see I'm holding the thread down so it sits flat along the bottom of the hole. And then I can bring the needle and it will just slide along the top of the hole. There it is. Now I don't know if you've noticed but see I'm using my finger down here on the back on the mat it's giving me support while I'm working up here now I can just thread it through nice and easily now as I thread it through I'm going to lay out my thread again and snake it around I'm doing it over this side now okay so now, as we get into the closer to here, I'll just pull this down so you can see what's going on. I'll bring the French wire down a little bit closer. And you can watch it all come into place. So I can just put my finger on the, on the pearl. Just slowly bring it in. Now you can see it happening. And what will happen is the French wire will come up and around and go in. And there it is. Now I've got a nice perfect loop and it's protecting my thread. I've got all my threads on this side and I'm ready for my first knot right here. Now I'm just going to bring my thread over to the other side where I said it's always going to be. Once, we, once we've got it set up, you'll get yourself into a rhythm and you'll find it quite quick. Um, it's just this first little bit and I'm, I'm particularly being, um, you know, taking it slow so that you can understand what I'm doing. Now here's our working space and uh, I'm going to make my first knot. Now. The way I do it, it's basically an overhand knot 
Now, if you find your own way that's comfortable, but my way is I put two fingers underneath and then I bring the thread around and up and on top. And then I've got that little cross there and I'm going to put my thumb on it and just open my fingers ever so slightly. Now, if I take my fingers away, you can see that actually all I've done is made a little loop like I'm going to do a knot. And then if I just hold that in place, I'm actually going to bring my thread through there. But I like to do it with my fingers so that I can just have a little bit more control over the thread. So two fingers on, on the top, around, hold the cross, and then I bring my needle up through the middle. Now, I do this slowly and I lay out my thread as I go. So there's my thread laid down with my needle here. And then I can just pull on both of the ends and just take your time with it. There's the two ends and I'm just going to bring up those two ends of the knot and pull it in tight. Now you can see it's only a small knot and it's at this point you can make the decision how big you'd like that knot to be. So it's very easy. Because this pearl's rather large, um, you can see the, the, the hole is filled by the knot, but it's not a very big knot. So I'm just going to do another one. And again, make my loop, hold the cross, bring my needle up through the middle, bring the thread through, lay out the thread, take both sides and then pull it up nice and firmly and you can see I've got a larger knot now. Now if I want to check to see, I can do another if I want to, but I can just check. I think that's a really nice size between the knots so that will look quite good. So now I'm ready for my next pearl. So I bring that up into my workspace and as we did before Hold it down nice and firmly and bring the thread through. And pull the thread through. Now once I've got the thread through, I just oops, pull up that bead. Now see it's really nice and firmly up with that knot right in there and now it's time for my next knot. So again two fingers, bring the thread around, hold the cross and then bring my needle up through from the back. Pull the thread through, lay it out get the two sides and then just pull up the knot and because I've made the decision to put two knots here I need to do a second Now you can do as many knots as you want to depending on the size of your pearls if you're using a really small pearl you might only need one or a bigger one there we go and now ready for the third knot so I'll just go through it one more time for you so there it is, through the hole, oops. See I'm being very gentle with my needle. Pull it through. Make sure it's up right to the bead. And now I'm ready for my next knot. So bring the thread underneath. Up through, pull on both of the ends. Next one. Underneath. So you can see once you get in, get going, 
quite quick. Yeah, now I've done two, I think. Yep. And now I'll bring up the next one. See, now as you use your working space, you might find it becomes smaller. So if that's the case, you can just unravel a little bit of your thread and push the beads down to the stop and then your working space becomes larger. That's what that little extra bit at the end is for. Now it's time to talk about the length of your bracelet or necklace, whatever the case may be. But here I've used a half a strand of pearls, which is about uh, eight inches of pearls. But obviously by the time I add the knots, and by the time I add my clasp, that will add in an extra couple of inches. Uh, so what we do at this point is you can just measure approximately, you know, how much you'll need by putting your... Now see, obviously I've got way too many there, so I probably won't want these last two at all. But it's okay, we don't need to worry about them for now. So based on that, I want to keep knotting now until I get to my last four beads or even five and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to measure again and then I'm going to finish the end. So we'll continue knotting along until we get to the last four or five beads. Now I'm just going through the last bead that I want to go through, which I think is the fifth one from the end. And I'll just pull that up. Right, and I've done all my knots here of the, of the rest of the bracelet. Now, as we said, on this end, I've got left one, two, three, four, and here's the fifth. And these were the two that I decided I would discard because that there were too many. So I'll just come along and I'll undo this thread. And I'll take the bead off. So I know I wasn't going to use these two. So I have a pair of earrings left over here. And I'm just going to measure this now because, as I said, the knots increase uh, you know how much you've got how it increases the length of your of your bracelet so actually that's pretty nice for me so if I oops put that back down there lay that there and bring this up by the time I've got the clasp on that will actually fit me very nicely so I'm happy with this amount of beads on my thread now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to knot here, I'm not going to knot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and my thread through each of these beads and not make a knot. So I'll just start with the first one. See, I've got that a little bit bent. I can just straighten it out. See, with my fingernail. And get it back and straight again. Or if all else fails, I can just clip that with my scissors. So there's the next one. So 
so there's three on. I can just slide them down a bit. And now my last one. Now what I'm going to do is I've got all four on but obviously I haven't put any knots. Now it's this thread here which was my bit of safety thread in the beginning uh, is going to now come out because now my needle is on this end. So I've just got to work out which one is which. So just Hug on them and see which one comes out. Which one are you? Oh yeah, that's the right one. So see now I'm just pulling it back out. Now there's my last knot. So I actually want to pull it out to this one where there is no knot. So I'll just bring you here. <coughs> So if you can see, there's my last knot and now I've brought this excess thread out to here and it's going to be discarded later on and this is where I actually finished my bracelet. So now I'm ready to go back the other direction. So I can lay these down here like this, bring in the other half of my clasp which is here my other little piece of French wire and now I can go back the other way. So again, just like we did before, and this needle is starting to annoy me, so I think I'll just snip off the end. Now I've got a nice needle again. Right, so very carefully pick up your French wire, thread it on, Again, like we did before, very carefully bring it down to the end, about there. Then I'll thread on my the other half of my clasp. And now I'm going to go back through this bead. Now, we need to leave a little bit of space to put the knots in but funnily enough it doesn't matter how often I do it I never get it to sit where it's supposed to sit so I've decided not to worry about it and I always just leave it I don't worry if there's a little bit of a gap so I'm just going back through that bead there we go and before I pull it all the way up I'm going to put it into position. And then I'll just hold it in place. Bring the gimp or the French wire down where you want it. Just let it slide down. I bring the clasp down as well. Pop it in position. And then if I just hold here, I can just slowly pull it up and you'll see here it comes all the way around and in and there's my clasp attached now see I've got a little bit of a gap there but that's perfect because by the time I put knots in between all of these it'll be just the right size so now I just need to make some knots along to here. So what I'm going to do is like a blanket stitch for those of you that um, are thread women. So how I do that is I just pick up the beads in one hand. Now I take my finger and I just do a little crossover. See I'm just crossing it over and laying it on top of the thread. So you see that? So I've literally made like a loop on top 
and then I hold it in place. Then I bring my needle under the thread because that's what's going to make the knot. Get under there, there it is. And then I'm going to bring the needle up through that loop. And again, if I just pull it up and then slowly, slowly as I pull it, you'll see that it'll just pull it up between the beads. See, here comes my knot. There it is. And I pull it tight. And then I'll do another. So again, make a loop with my fingers. Lay it on top of the thread. Bring your needle under the thread. And then up through this loop up inside the loop, pull the thread through. See I'm keeping my finger in place, it's sort of keeping it where it's supposed to be. Then as I get closer I can just loosen my finger so you see the knot is going in between those two pearls and then as I pull it up you can just see it come up and then I can pull it tight. So now I've got quite a nice knot happening there and I'm, it's good that I've got a little bit of space here because I've got room for my knots. So now I'm going to take my thread through the next pearl. Now how we do that <coughs> is you can actually even put it at a right angle to the previous one so that then you can pop it through. I'll just take that through to the next one. Once you get it in, then you can just, here it comes, pull it through, see and again I just take my time so I don't get myself into a problem. There's my knot and so now I'm ready to do my next one. So again it's just another blanket stitch. That's where my knot's going to be. Just twist the thread, lay it on top of the cord between the beads. Bring your needle underneath the beads and up through that loop and then pull the thread up. And by holding the position here, then I can just make sure that that knot just stays between the beads. There we go. Do another one. Loop on top. Needle underneath. Up through the middle. And then I can just make sure it sits in between and pull it up. So I'm just going to continue on until I get to here. So I'll take my thread through here and do another knot. So remember as I said to put your thread through, turn it on a complete you know, right angle to your bead and then you can get it that hole and just pop it through. There it comes. Just thread through. Naughty boy. How did you do that? Okay, there you are. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my next lot of knots. by now you realize that this is actually quite an easy method to do pearl knotting and it's really quite foolproof if you just take your time with it 
you'll actually find it quite enjoyable and you're getting a very professional result. A lot of us have, you know, pearls from from family members that are, you know, need restringing or we've got ones that we've had for years and you don't need to pay, you know, pounds and pounds and pounds or an expensive amount to have it done at the jewellers anymore. Just you can do it yourself just as easily. Okay, so now I'm on the last one, and once I've pulled it through, we're on the homeward stretch, and I've got my two threads coming out here. So both of my ends are very secure. I've got all my knots in between, and it's just left now to finish off these knots here. Now I just do you know really a double knot and how I do that is you know right over left or left over right and then one through the middle and then I hold the knot and this thread I take over and under through the back so I've got quite a lot of knot there and then I can just, you can see there's a lot of good knot there, pull it in nice and tight. Then I turn it completely over and I do the same again on this side. So again, left over right one through the middle, hold the knot, this one's on top, take it underneath, bring it through and pull it up tight. Now that should be enough to do it but if you really want to, what I think I might do is do one more on this side then all that remains is to do a little spot of glue and I'll show you how to do that too. There you go. Now there's our pearl bracelet all finished and I'll just show you how to glue it. Now I can snip these two threads down to about there just so that I'm not working with the leftover thread and I'll get my glue and I'll show you what to do. Now I've got my card here and I've just put a little bit of super glue onto it and I'll just put that away, get it out of the way. And I've got a cocktail stick. Now you'll notice the bead mat is nowhere to be found anymore because um, glue and bead mats don't really like each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these beads with the thread like this so I can get to the knot and try not to get any glue on the pearl. So I'll just get a little bit of glue on my cocktail stick and then I'm just going to very gently put it on the knots. And you see I'm being particularly careful not to get any glue on my pearls but see I'm also going up the thread see that and then I'll turn it over and do the same on the other side a bit more glue oh missed see and again just just a teeny weeny bit oh, I've got some on the pearl then yuck now the reason I'm going up the thread is because that's going to go lovely and hard and then I can cut it later on okay so now it's just up to me to leave that to dry and once it's dry I can trim my thread which I shall show you in a moment now the glue's dry and 
and you can see the thread is quite firm now so I'm very happy with that result and then all that's left for me to do is to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it just above the knot I'm just going to leave a tiniest little slither of thread just above the knot and that is it finished here we go so now I'm just going to lay it on my mat because I want it to sit nicely and evenly so put it on your bead mat or your tablecloth or something and then I just want you to give it a little roll you know like play-doh or sausages or something and just give it a little roll and that will seat the knots nicely in the beads and make them sit nicely now obviously we've got black knots in this so while I was waiting for the glue to dry here's one I made earlier I actually did make it while the glue was drying and again I see this so you can see it in white and this was with the other half of the strand of beads and I think I've still got one two three about five left over so there we are there it is in white and there's our finished bracelet I'm often asked how to make a perfect two or three strand necklace so that it sits beautifully one inside the other. It's actually really easy and I'll share some secrets with you. The first thing and the most important to start is your clasp. You need to choose a clasp as I have here. With This is a two strand clasp and the pearls sit perfectly within the two strands so it works very well. If the pearls were smaller I would have got a smaller clasp. If they were larger or I had three strands I would have looked for one that held them comfortably so that they're not sitting irregularly. Now the math of getting it sitting perfect is actually very easy. It's if you've got beads of the same width on all of the strands all you have to remember is four times the width. Now what that means is your inside strand has four less beads than the outside strand. Because these beads are all the same size, four times is four beads. So if I wanted to do a three strand, so if I brought in this strand here and wanted to make a three strand and they were all the same beads, then this again would be the times four. So you would have the middle strand as your normal strand, the inside strand would be minus four beads, and the outside strand would be plus four beads. And that would give you again a perfect three strand necklace. Now if you wanted to use not rounds but something like these ovals or any shape really it's four times the width of the widest bead now the nice thing about the ovals is they're usually half as wide as they are long so four times the width would actually equal to two beads so what that would mean is your inside strand would have two less beads than your outside strand so that's all you have to remember four times the width of the widest bead there's a little something I'd like to show you that I think you're going to love. This is called a pearl enhancer. You can see the bottom half of it is a bale and the top has a large, a large hook opening. So for the bale, you can put any pendant on. I've just got a crystal one here that literally you just pop one side in the hole of the pendant and then the other side you just gently close over your pendant so you can open and close it and change your pendants as you like. This part here opens up, it hinges at the back. And why has it got such a large area? Well, this is the great part. You have your strand of finished pearls, you pop this over and then you clip it shut. And now I have a hanging pendant. 
on my pearls. And then if I want to wear it without the pendant or even change the pendant, I literally pop it open and take it off. How good is that?